Hi everyone. So today I'm talking about something that I think everyone in the running world has an opinion on. Whether you love them, or you hate them, or you think you're du they're dumb, or you think they're the best thing ever, virtual runs are a part of our life. At least since March they have been. Um, personally, I never really understood the appeal in virtual runs. I've also never done one before up until this point, so maybe that's why. But um, before March, I worked with a company that puts on races. I know we offered virtual runs and that people did them, but personally, I saw it as something I would never really do because I go to a race for the experience of racing, to be running with other people, to be part of the excitement, to get an official time, to have that community and camaraderie and a sense of an event and that this is something that's happening that you're working towards. To me, a virtual run lacked that, and it just kind of seemed like buying a medal, um, which was one of the less important things at a run for me. So this video is going to be all about how to make a virtual run feel more real, so that we can all celebrate and enjoy our runs even when we can't meet in person. Tip number one, plan out the date and time that you're going to run. Just like a real event, you want to have something that you're training for, you want to have a goal and a reason to put in those miles, or at least personally, that's what I want. So I selected a date and a time. Um, this is going to be Sunday, July 26, um, at 8 a.m. And so I had picked out this weekend for a while, um, once I started getting into shape, knowing what my distance was, um, and being able to predict kind of based on mileage where I would be, I set this weekend apart and said, okay, this is when I'm going to do that 15k. Make a point of creating a specific time and a specific day for you to set goals for. In terms of planning, tip number two is to plan out a course beforehand. That way you have a start line and a finish line. So if you want friends and family to come cheer for you, or you just want to mentally know how far you need to go, what the exact distance is, you have that already taken care of. You don't just kind of have to look at your watch and figure it out as you go on race day. It makes it feel a little bit more real. Luckily for me, the event that I had canceled, the 15k, was actually pretty close to my neighborhood. So I was able to go online and look up the courses and find step-by-step -step instructions, turn left here, turn right here, you turn over there, um, to figure out what the course was. So my mom and I, <laughs> we actually drove the course today and marked in chalk on the sidewalk um, the course markers so that I wouldn't get lost. This to me did two things. Um, it gave me a little bit of peace of mind knowing that I don't have to check my phone every, you know, half mile, quarter of a mile on the run. And also made it so that um, we had something to look forward to. It felt more like a real event. There was this excitement of scoping out the course and then knowing tomorrow I'm going to run it. Again, making it feel like a real event. Alright, so my third tip, and something some of you all might not agree with, is get your medals beforehand. Yes. I know that for virtual events, um, a lot of people feel like they need that results submitting validation in order to get their medal. Because if you didn't submit your results, how does the race company know that you did your event? If they send it beforehand, then it's meaningless because just anybody gets a medal. Which to a certain extent is true, but for virtual runs especially, I think their validation is that you paid. You paid for this medal, you're going to get it, whether or not you submit a distance, because that's just how these kind of things work. So, um... Really, it is a personal choice, up to you, whether you submit your results first or um, wait to run until you get your medal. But for me, waiting to run until I get my medal was the right choice because going back to that idea of creating an event that feels like a real event, that feels exciting, that has a goal tied to it, having a medal at the finish line is super important. It makes the medal more meaningful to me and it just makes the event feel real. You start at the start line, you cross the finish line, you get your medal and your finisher item right after you run because you did it and you completed the event and you have your medal and that whole day and that whole memory is summed up in the medal. I've had this, again, the event was canceled 
back in um, March. I've had this since March unopened. Um, I don't want to know what the metal looks like. I want to get it after I run. I feel like, wow, I earned this. Now I can look at it. Now I can wear it. Now I can put it up on my wall. So I'm going to have my mom take it tomorrow. I'm going to have her open it, look completely sealed, and present it to me at the finish. So wait to get your medal. At least that's my advice. My final piece of advice, and I know not everybody can follow this, is to let friends and family know what you're doing. So whether it's sending out a text message, putting it on Facebook, even, you know, I live with my mom, um, letting her know that this event is happening so that people can go and cheer you on. Letting people know that you're doing this means that they can either come and physically cheer you on, meet you at the finish line, set up a water station, follow you on the course, or even just send you a text. In the morning, good luck, have fun on your run. Or when you come back, congratulations, put it on Facebook so people can see it. You know, part of the reason you do a run is to build community. And right now it's a little bit more difficult to have that community within your group of runners, but you can still have that community celebrating you as you start and finish, and even along the course. So I definitely would recommend letting people know so they can go out and celebrate with you. Thank you. Yeah. Yay. No, 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 I just want to say that after doing this, I really feel like virtual runs are something I should give more of a shot to, um, even during a regular season, though I'm hoping by next year I'll have the opportunity to do more runs and more triathlons. Um, I think that virtual running is a great opportunity to challenge yourself when there may not be an event near you or do an event that you want to be a part of even though it's far away and just do something special that your friends and family can feel like is a personal event instead of something huge and massive. I mean, obviously those events have their appeals, but I think there is something to be said for a virtual run, especially now. So these are just my tips for this virtual run. Um, obviously I'm not an expert. I don't think really any of us are at this point, but if you've done a lot more virtual runs than me and you want to leave some advice on how you've made virtual runs more fun or made them feel more real, leave them in the comments. I'll respond and maybe um, my next virtual run, which I'm sure will happen, I'll try them out. All right, thank you.